I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Chapter 17. Practice. Crop rotation. I called my friend Bonnie, asking her what to do about the pain in my heels. Well, first she told me, you should pay attention to what your body is saying. Bonnie's a longtime friend and a fitness coach I've often called to tell me basically that I'm aging. I bet, she went on, you'll need to get off your feet for a while. I sighed. That's really unfortunate. I was just developing a good exercise rhythm. No, she said. I'm not saying to quit working out. You need to stay in shape. I'm saying you should change things up. Get in a pool. Get on a bike. The discomfort I was experiencing wasn't my body's way of saying stop doing healthy things. It was my body's way of saying stop doing that particular thing for a season. Bonnie was right. I was hiking and jogging a lot. So instead of reading my pain as a sign that I ought to cease from physical activity altogether, I started changing things up. The pain eventually disappeared, which meant I was able to jog and hike again without discomfort. Meanwhile, I got to give myself the gift of discovering just how much I hate swimming. I'll always go back to the hills because that's where I'm most at home. It's the kind of exercise I enjoy most as well as what I'm best at. But there are seasons when it's best for me to adventure elsewhere and in different ways. It's likely, if you've been making art for a while, you felt the season change, but might not have had the language or permission to see that seasonal change for what it was. It may have felt like things had simply dried up, that rain wasn't falling on the ground or the ground was too hard to grow anything. Everything took 10 times the effort, and even when your efforts did bear fruit, the fruit was sour. Certainly, it's possible that such signs are symptomatic of a dry creative season. There are seasons when letting the land lie fallow and unseeded is appropriate as well, but I think those seasons have more to do with exhaustion. My experience has been that I mistake seasons of creative dryness for seasons in which it's time to make something else. So rather than simply waiting for the next moment of inspiration or the next deadline to move you into a creative work, move yourself out of your normal discipline and do some painting, drawing, some shooting with a camera, maybe just some play. After all, you are a creature who creates. That is the core of who you are. The medium you choose for your art is secondary. I've spent more time on prose recently, like the project in your hand, than I have on musical projects. I'm comfortable saying that I'm currently in a season of writing prose, mostly essays, letters, and personal reflection. Thinking in seasonal terms helped me from freaking out that I have so little happening musically. A few years ago, I might have been afraid of such a thing, wondering if I left my musical gift off to rot somewhere while I fool around distractedly with writing. I'm primarily a songwriter, after all. Prose work is new. It's exciting. But because I know it's a season, I can attend to the planting, tending, and growing of prose work. Songwriter Sandra McCracken likes the image of crop rotation when thinking of creative seasons. It's an image she borrowed from Joni Mitchell, who in turn, and somewhat obviously, borrowed it from the agrarian tradition where it is practiced. In short, crop rotation means that a farmer has to grow different crops in different seasons in the same land. If she doesn't rotate her crops, the soil of her fields loses its capacity to healthily produce, which eventually compromises the quality of her primary crop. I'm learning to plant different seed and make different work during different seasons so that the creative soil of my life remains healthy. If I plant the same seed in the same field over and over again, I eventually ruin my creative soil and my crops will grow unhealthily. I'm not suggesting you run out and randomly take up a new practice per se, although that might be a fun thing to do. Instead, it might be the case that you already have a creative practice you can make more intentional. Practices that might deserve a whole season of their own. A solid example of my own process has been writing sermons and essays. Because I teach regularly in my faith community and have since 1999, I've generally written and publicly taught something about once a month, if not more often. For many years, I thought of my prose work as this other thing I was doing when it was really part of the same creative process all along. 
reading my past through the filter of Sandra McCracken's crop rotation image, I can say with some confidence that writing those sermons and essays has enriched my songwriting process. For instance, there are images and phrases I found deeply meaningful in writing sermons I would likely not have discovered or valued while focused on lyrics. Also, the more I learn about the importance of cadence and pace in sermon execution, the more I can feel the tempo and movement of a song, even as I shape its words. So consider what other seed might you plant? Blogging? Painting? Playing an instrument? Those are a bit obvious. I'd also suggest that being a mother or a father is a creative practice as well. Playing imaginatively with your kids is every bit as much a creative endeavor as playing piano. Whatever it is, approach it intentionally, letting that season be a season you enjoy fully rather than seeing it as a distraction or a waiting period between seasons of real creativity. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Title Pending Audio Series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.